what we're going to do here, guys, is, is a lot of you who, who have been through um, a lot of groin pain, um, you, you tend to, to look around and figure out, what the heck is this? It's like, is it a hip flexor? Is it a hip impingement? Do I have a tight TFL and all that kind of stuff? And so a good way to kind of screen these is using resisted and passive testing. And this is something people can do at home. Let's just say Dawn has an issue with this hip right here and she's been wondering what the heck is it? All right, bring this one down for me. And so we're gonna do a couple things. And the first one is people tend to think, well, maybe I have a hip flexor problem. And so let's bring this thing up and we're gonna bring it really close to her body and just take this hand and push it. Don't let the knee lose. Pull it, uh, smash it, good. Pull it up, pull it up, pull it up, pull it up, good. And relax. A lot of times in that position with that aggressive hip bend, people will have pain if it's passive, but if it's active, a lot of times, again, this is testing the hip flexor. If this is not a symptom generating movement, this is not the hip flexor. Other times people are concerned that they have, um, they, that they have a, a rectus femoris strain. So go ahead and push in again. Good. So this one's a little bit more challenging to do on your own, but we're gonna use gravity as a load. Go ahead and kick up real slow and down. Okay. She can actually put a band kind of here and resist it. I'll act like I'm the band. Push up, kick and down and kick and down. As long as she keeps pressure in there, and relax, and if that didn't hurt, then we're really not looking at a rectus femoris insertion problem either. Now, one that we can do, which is a, it's a, it's a good passive test, and I'd say it's hip impingement, groin impingement, or what we call femoral acetabular impingement, is probably one of the most common reasons for people to have groin pain, but they just have no idea because they haven't found it yet. Honestly, when we were in grad school, they didn't really teach it in school. It took about five years out of school for us to even figure out that this thing, thing even existed. So there's a lot of clinicians out there who just don't simply look for it. Um, they will very soon, um, but they just need to look for it. Go ahead and grab this. And so don't use your belly at all. Just use your arms and try to pull this up and across your body. And so usually in this quadrant right here, people feel a pinch right in there, all right? So consider in this, if she's use, really using her arms She's not using her hip flexors. She's not using groin muscles in the front because she's passively putting it into this position. Go ahead and relax. If this is truly painful on the groin, you don't want to hold it there too long, but there's right here, there's a bone there, which the hip comes up and it just simply hits it. It almost creates a little bit of a bruise. Oh, I got a model here. <laughs> so in this case right here, so there's this little rim right here and this little rim, basically when the hip comes up, when it comes up, it tends to be clear right here, but when you bring it across, it tends to hit a little area in there which it doesn't like. And the further you get into it, the more it pisses it off. And so doing this in this position passively, imagine my finger in here. We're just kind of crushing the finger. It's a pinch point. It's not a stretch point. In contrast, if we're looking at a hip flexor, then maybe extension would bother it or resisted. Like if a rubber band was here, it'd be pulling on the rubber band. And so it's stressing that structure. In this case, we're challenging the rim of, of the joint here. And so if this is positive on you, you're probably looking at impingement. The cool thing, all we gotta do with hip impingement is we have to just really control this bone right here, the dish called the ilium. And so if you roll this ilium back, um, uh, not necessarily actively too much, but you do exercises to help roll it back and you get the belly wall to help, a lot of times things go pretty well. And so what this does is if you look at this one single reference point is this rolls it down here, but this rolls it up. And so when we do that, the hip has more range to go up without creating that little pinch point. The abdominal wall helps to raise the entire thing. They work together to create a dial, all right? And so if you found that some of these tests are positive, then maybe this is something you should think about, okay? So go ahead and line your back one more time. <clears throat> Consider then the, the anatomy right here is, is, there, is the, there is the muscle right there that is, the, that is the rectus femoris and the sartorius. Yes, they're there, there's a the TFL there. Yes, they're all there, the hip flexor's there. However, when, pe when the groin is irritated, think of it like a fire gr growing right there. And so if you have hip impingement, the fire grows and all this stuff around it just gets really tense. And so treating the muscles and stretching the muscles and, and beating the snot out of the muscles doesn't always work unless you chill, out, chill down the main source of fire, in this case, hip impingement. People tend to go down this route of, 
I don't know what my diagnosis is. I don't have an image to prove it. I don't want to do anything because they're scared to do anything because they feel like they're going to make themselves worse. We have a lot of free videos on Instagram, which covers a lot of the stuff that we tend to do, but obviously it's not organized for you guys. And so all you really need is a guide and most people don't tend to know exactly what to do and when and what point in their care. And so we do have a video guide for you. The challenging thing for a lot of people, especially when they don't have anyone directing them one-on-one, -on -one, is they're scared to do stuff, all right? You don't have to be scared to at least try stuff. So reach out to us. We're p2sportscare.com. Huntington Beach, it's a good place to vacation.